Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rad from Sherber and Rad here in Washington, D.C. And I'm filming this video to share with you the latest updates on the FDA's recall of Allergan's textured breast implants, which was announced last Wednesday, July 24th, 2019. And um, there's been more and more media hype over the association of textured implants and specifically Allergan's textured biocell breast implant with a very rare lymphoma or cancer of the immune system called anaplastic large cell lymphoma or ALCL. And I'll refer to this lymphoma as ALCL uh, in, for the duration of this video. So um, I'm going to do this in a Q&A format so that it makes sense and it, and it flows logically. And basically what I'm going to cover is what is all the hype about? What is ALCL? Why is, is it important to worry about if it's such a rare cancer? Um, how do, what signs and symptoms do I look out for if I have breast implants? Um, what should I be monitoring for? Um, if I have concern for the signs and symptoms, which I will cover shortly, then what do I do about it? Um, and then um, if I'm diagnosed with ALCL, how is it treated? So uh, starting from the top, what is all the hype about uh, with uh, the FDA's announcement last Wednesday? Well, the FDA specifically uh, recalled um, Allergan's textured breast implants. Allergan is one of the three major manufacturers, manufacturers of breast implants in this country. The other two are Mentor and Cientra. And um, uh, the breast implants that are utilized for breast reconstruction after mastectomy and breast augmentation come in two different types. And those types are smooth surfaced implants, um, which is this one, and textured surfaced implants, which is this more opaque one. And ALCL is a rare lymphoma or cancer of the immune system that is associated sometimes with the textured type of implant. It does not affect the smooth surfaced implants. So if you know you have smooth surfaced implants, you, can, um, you don't have to worry because ALCL has not been uh, reported as a concern specifically with smooth surfaced implants. We're gonna focus um, on the textured surfaced implants. So, um, uh, the recall affects specifically Allergan's textured implants. It does not affect uh, Sientra or Mentor's uh, textured surfaced implants. And the reason um, that Allergan is in the spotlight is because recent information has shown that there is a six times greater likelihood or a greater association of ALCL with Allergan's um, textured surface as compared with Mentor's or Sientra's textured surface implants. That's not to say that ALCL has not occurred with other manufacturers' um, breast implants. That's just to say that Allergan's um, implant surface is associated with a six times greater frequency of ALCL. Uh, now, what is ALCL? Well, I mentioned it's a lymphoma. It's a cancer of the immune system. But what causes it? Well, basically, when a textured surface implant is placed into a woman's breasts for, for either augmentation or reconstruction, sometimes bacteria can get into the little crevices, and that's basically what gives the textured surface is this microscopic um, uh, hills and valleys and, and um, crevices in the surface of the implant. Bacteria can more readily get trapped in the little crevices, and when that's placed into the breast, um, then the immune system will react to those bacteria because obviously bacteria is foreign. The immune system is activated to try to clear that bacteria, but it can't because the bacteria is really stuck in those crevices. Uh, so over time, over on average eight years, it takes eight years on average for ALCL to develop, um, the immune system is stimulated chronically, setting up what's called chronic inflammation, and over the course of on average eight years, um, the immune system can develop uh, immune cells that turn into cancer just because they're just overstimulated. Um, and, and so that's when ALCL can develop. Um, so uh, the long and short of it is that it's related to textured surfaces because there's just an overactivation of the immune system in reaction, in response to bacteria that can, can um, grab hold of the surface of the implant and set up a chronic inflammation that eventually leads to cancer uh, cancer development in the immune cells. Now, um, you might be asking, why do we even use textured surface implants anyway? Well, the reason that textured implants were developed is to prevent 
um, problems that have been associated with smooth surfaced implants. Now, let's take, for example, a woman who's had a breast augmentation and she has a smooth surfaced implant. One thing that can happen over time is that the smooth implant can bottom out. It can just stretch. Gravity's pulling that implant down uh, all the time, and over years, it can stretch the breast tissue to the point where the implant sits too low. That can cause something called a double bubble deformity, where the implant, you can actually sort of see an extra bubble uh, at the bottom of, the, of a woman's breast as a result of the implant just sliding down. Now, how does textured surfacing prevent that? Well, the, the tissues of the breast grab onto the surface, the textured surface, and prevents the implant from bottoming out. Um, because there's much greater contact of the tissue on the uh, textured surface and so there's, um, there's friction and the tissues can hold up the implant much more readily as opposed to the smooth surface which, is, uh, which, um, which uh, slides and glides and, um, and is much more prone to bottoming out. So the reason that implant manufacturers develop textured surface is to prevent bottoming out, uh, particularly for patients for women who have weaker tissues, such as in reconstruction, where there's just a thin um, uh, skin envelope that covers the implant. And it also uh, prevents or helps to prevent rotation of a teardrop-shaped implant, which is what this is. Um, a teardrop-shaped implant has this, uh, the shape and contour of a natural breast shape. There's fullness at the bottom with a natural taper going up. And if, if you imagine that this if this implant were to rotate in the body, in, uh, in a woman's breast, and it would look really bizarre where there's fullness up top and there's a taper down below. So we don't want rotation of a teardrop implant, so the texturing um, allows the tissues to grip onto the implant and prevent that uh, rotation. So that's the reason why we have textured implants. And um, this information about ALCL, how, ALCL, how, ALCL, excuse me, ALCL has um, been coming about uh, over the last uh, several years in particular, we don't know much about it because there have been so few cases reported. And let's get into the incidence. What is, what is the incidence of this rare cancer? And um, am I at risk? I mean, that's the bigger question for patients who have breast implants. Well, as I mentioned, if you have smooth surfaced implants, then you don't need to worry about this because based on what we know, ALCL does not occur with smooth surfaced implants. It just affects the texturing. So um, talking about the incidence or the frequency of, um, of ALCL, it, um, 573 cases have been reported, of which there have been 33 deaths from ALCL. And this is worldwide. This is um, across millions of women who have breast implants. And um, uh, now the 573 cases affect women who have textured surfaced implants. And in Europe, 80% of women who have implants have textured surface. That's just the Europeans' preference for um, breast augmentation or reconstruction is to use textured surface, whereas in the United States, only 5% of women have textured surface implants. So um, it, it, it's, it's 573 cases across hundreds of thousands, um, many hundreds of thousands of uh, women uh, with textured surfaced implants. Um, so looking at the incidence of ALCL, it's somewhere between 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 1,000. It's somewhere in the middle. And we don't know the exact number as of now because uh, the, case, the number of cases uh, is very low and uh, it's hard to really pinpoint exactly what that incidence is, but it's somewhere in that range. So. Um, uh, and then looking at the number of deaths, the number of deaths from ALCL, it's 33 of the 573. And so the, the chance of dying from ALCL if a woman has a textured surface breast implant is 1 in 17,000 chance. So if you, if you put it in perspective, there are a lot of uh, other things that can put us at risk of death, of dying, like driving a car every day. You know, I, tell patients that um, over, over our lifetime, if we're driving a car day in, day out, on average, we have a one in 100 chance of dying from a car accident, which is pretty high if you think about it. And it's certainly much, much, much higher than one in 17,000 chance of dying from ALCL. So, um, that, but that's obviously not to belittle the importance of uh, ALCL and, um, and, and just educating women, which is obviously why I'm doing this video. 
Um, but let's talk about what are the signs and symptoms of, um, of ALCL? What do I need to look out for uh, if I'm a woman and I have textured surface breast implants? Well, number one, the, f the, the most common presenting sign is breast swelling. So one side, sometimes both, but usually just one breast, uh, there's increased progressive swelling of the breast. And it's due to accumulation of fluid around the implant. So the implant's on the inside and there's fluid between the implant and the surrounding breast tissue that, um, that, increase, that causes the breast to swell. Again, on average, eight years from the time of breast uh, implantation is the uh, average length of time it takes for ALCL to develop. So just because you have some breast swelling, especially if it's just a few months out from surgery, that does not mean that you have ALCL. Uh, it takes years for ALCL to develop. So it's not something that, that you should acutely be worried about um, uh, because it is a, such a slow uh, growing cancer. It's a slow developing process. Um, there is time to, to diagnose it and to treat it. Um, so uh, let's say that a woman has increasing breast swelling years after uh, implantation. What do we do about it? Well, first of all, see your plastic surgeon um, to, uh, to be examined. And if your plastic surgeon confirms that there is swelling uh, from fluid around the implant, then you need a, an ultrasound test. Um, and specifically, an ultrasound test that, that sees the fluid and then the radiologist places a needle to extract some of the fluid. And that fluid is very important because if there's ALCL present, then those ALCL cells can be picked up through um, what's called cytopathology. Basically, the fluid is sent to a pathologist who looks at the cells under a microscope after st actually uh, sends it through a machine called flow, uh, flow cytometer, um, performs flow cytometry, but the long and short of it is that um, there are certain tests that the pathologist can do to diagnose ALCL. Um, so next step, if in fact you're diagnosed with ALCL, what do we do about it? Do I need chemo? Do I need radiation therapy? Um, do I need surgery? Um, well, the answer is you need surgery. You do not need chemotherapy. You do not need radiation therapy. You need surgery to remove the implant and the wall of scar tissue that your body forms around the implant. It's called an en bloc, or uh, en bloc if you speak French, E-N-B-L-O-C, en bloc uh, explantation with the wall of scar around um, the implant. That has to be removed completely in order to cure the ALCL. And it is curative. That, that effectively eliminates uh, the ALCL completely. Um, so that is a surgery that um, is very well tolerated. Uh, you know, there's some discomfort and pain and recovery, et cetera, but it's a very well tolerated surgery. Uh, usually can be done as an outpatient. Um, sometimes patients might stay one night in the hospital. Um, but that is the cure for ALCL. Now, the next question uh, maybe on patients' mind is, you know, I have breast implants. Um, you know, I don't know if I have smooth or textured. Well, First of all, find out if you have smooth or textured, and the way to find out is to ask your plastic surgeon, um, number one, or you can uh, request the operative report from your breast surgery, uh, from the facility where you had the breast surgery. So if you had it done in a hospital operating room, then the hospital will have those records, um, or you might have a record of it yourself. So find out if you have smooth or textured. If you have smooth, again, you shouldn't have to worry about this, if you have textured, then the question is, do uh, patients need surgery to remove their implants, even if they have no symptoms? And the answer is no. The FDA does not recommend surgery to remove breast implants in the absence of a diagnosis of ALCL, in the absence of um, swelling, um, uh, pain that's associated with the swelling. So if you, if you feel fine and you, um, uh, you have no swelling and you're doing well, and there's no issues with your health, um, and, and, you, and, and you have, um, uh, you're comfortable, there's no concern for increasing size of your breast, then you don't need routine surgery to remove your implants or to change them. Um, the FDA strongly encourages that, uh, women to monitor their breasts um, and to see their plastic surgeons on a regular basis, particularly if they have textured surface implants. But we should not be ringing the alarm bells 
to, uh, you know, to, to take patients to surgery to remove their implants or swap them because um, there's no science that tells us or no information that tells us that that is necessary. That being said, um, uh, my patients who are very anxious about this uh, ALCL and their risk of ALCL, even though it's, uh, even though it's low, um, if I have a patient who is feeling fine um, um, and doesn't have any breast swelling to report, maybe there might even be some discomfort, but there's no swelling, there's no fluid, evidence of fluid around their implants, then um, you know, I, I would consult with that patient and just reassure her that the FDA does not recommend taking uh, patients like her to surgery to remove the implants. Um, Nonetheless, if a patient is, is just really uh, anxious about having her implants removed, then I will fully support that and I will talk to my patients about the options to restore volume in ways that involve transferring tissue, so using their own tissue for reconstruction. When I say tissue, I mean the fatty tissue. So I'm a specialist in something called microsurgery and I do a, a lot of surgeries uh, where I transfer tissue from one area of the body where there's excess fat and I use that uh, or transfer that fat to rebuild or augment a woman's breasts um, with their own tissue. And that is the safest, most natural way to perform reconstruction and to do augmentation. The, the most um, common procedure that I perform and that very few plastic surgeons are capable of performing is called the deep flap, D-I-E-P and um, I've spoken about it in prior videos and basically what it entails is transplanting the lower abdominal fat to, uh, to the breasts um, where uh, under a big microscope I um, restore blood flow and circulation through the transplanted tissue um, by connecting blood vessels um, to uh, blood vessels in the chest area. And that is very meticulous, very, very technically challenging surgery, but I do it a lot um, and uh, it's very, very successful for my patients and it eliminates all these concerns and risks associated with implants. So I definitely recommend that um, if, you're, you know, if you're a patient who is concerned about this risk of ALCL or if you're having problems with your implants, uh, capsular contracture, bottoming out, or um, uh, rippling, um, or uh, concern for implant rupture, um, asymmetry, uh, uh, just the implants kind of falling to the sides because of the tissues being weak. If you have any of these symptoms, and problems, then, then I definitely recommend investigating these tissue transplant operations, specifically the deep flap, D-I-E-P flap, um, the S-G-A-P or S-GAP flap, also called the love handle uh, technique, which my colleagues and I um, uh, pioneered while I was at Johns Hopkins on full-time faculty, uh, and the tug flap, which is a transplant of tissue from the inner thigh. So these um, options are really fantastic. Uh, you won't hear about them from many plastic surgeons because, again, only 1% of plastic surgeons have the ability to do these operations, um, and I'm um, very proud to be able to offer these options to my patients to solve these concerns and problems that can occur with implants. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, see my Facebook Live post uh, on this, um, and, uh, and please follow me. I um, uh, enjoy sharing uh, tips and information with my patients and um, with uh, women worldwide and patients worldwide who have concerns uh, or are just interested in plastic surgery. So I will see you next time and until